everybody. Uh, welcome back. Um, I have another video for you guys. I was in Spain recently. If you follow me on Facebook, if you don't follow me on Facebook, make sure you do. Um, you can follow all my adventures because I had a really exciting news last time. Um, uh, I went there to go to the Copa El Rey, uh, one of the Domo Vaquero champion, uh, competitions there, which is a qualifier for the championships, actually. And I spoke to um, some people from the Federation, and I will be competing in the 2018 Championships Campeonato de Dona Maquera of Spain. So that's amazing news. I've been waiting all year to, to finalize that and all year to finally share. So we have a short period to go. It'll be, um, we're in end of August now, and it'll be in October. Um, and I'll be sharing the rest of that piece of the journey with you guys. So I was in Spain, I was with Antonio Quinta at his stables, his amazing stables with amazing horses. And I wanted to share a video with you guys of um, me riding this amazing brown mare. So you've seen videos of me before with Latino, the big gray horse, um, who's also a Tres Angres. This is a Tres Angres mare around, uh, I believe she was uh, 10 years old, something like that. Um, and she was absolutely astounding. She was super electric. You just saw her jig there. So this was the second day I rode her. Unfortunately, I had my Pixio with me, um, but unfortunately, the damn thing, uh, something went wrong the first day, so it didn't follow me. And the first day I rode her, she was, um, uh, Antonio came and he actually gave me kind of a lesson with her. So I don't have that for you, I'm sorry, which is so annoying. Um, but I did get this footage from the second day, and I was just riding and feeling and kind of, you know, seeing how she is. Because the first day I got on her, she was so electric. My legs were like cattle prods. I thought, oh, my God, what's, what's happening? What am I doing? Um, which is cool because I love that. I like to do, I prefer to do less than to do more. Um, and that's kind of how Isolde is. So if you've seen videos of Isolde, she's like that, except this mare is nice and relaxed. And Isolde, she gets really, really, really tense. This mare can too, but not as bad. Um, but she was awesome. Um, she was so, so responsive to my aids. Here I was just, you know, practicing super simple stuff, just riding circles, you know, um, just going around, doing aids, um, just, you know, feeling how, making sure she was bending because that was a problem I had been having with Latino. Um, but this horse is actually ridden regularly by um, uh, her owner. He was a really good rider, um, who I, I think is absolutely amazing. I've been coming here to Antonio's stables for quite some time, and he ha also he always has really nice horses, and I've ridden several of them um, in the past. Um, and I was so thankful that Antonio let me uh, ride her as well. Um, so she felt amazing. She was totally symmetrical, and she was flexible, um, and she was you know loose and 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 just. Um, supple and so nice to ride, um, you know, much more sensitive than Latino. Latino, don't get me wrong, is an amazing horse. I mean, um, I, I kind of have to choose now. So I have, uh, for the championships, to ride in the championships, I have to choose between Latino and this mare, and then there's another horse. So I'll be sharing those videos um, as I go. And um, Latino is, is absolutely an amazing horse. He's a gelling, so that's totally different, right? He's more constant. Um, you know, if if I if I get him um, in the right place, if he's gymnasticized and he's he's supple and straight and, and uh, symmetrical as well, then he's amazing and he's more dependable. With a horse like this mare, um, either it's really really good or it's really really bad. So it's kind of a risk. Uh, I would be taking, considering the fact that I've never actually competed in Domo Arqueda, and I'm going to the championship. So my first competition will be at the championship. So, but hey, I like a challenge, um, and I don't mind taking risks. So um, I was totally, you know, amazed by her. So, so by the time I left Antonio's, this was my choice. So here I'm just, you know, um, sharing a training session. That second day, uh, I rode her. Um, just trying to feel her and find out, you know, uh, how she is, how she reacts. Um, she, she was, like I said, she was super um, flexible, so no matter if I went to the left or the right, right was a slightly more her difficult side to bend. 
um, meaning her right leg was actually is the leg that needs more strength, um, her right hind leg, but um, she was easier to bend to the left like almost every horse I ride there. Um, but she still, because she's ridden well and gymnasticized well um, on a regular basis, she was still supple. I mean, it was a slight difference um, to the right. It wasn't very much at all. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to warm up. I'm going to do some riding trot. Um, you know, thinking a little bit shoulder in, not, not really with that much of an angle, but really trying to make sure she does put that left hind leg under and when I went to the, when I went to the right as well and just feeling um, seeing how much I can get her to bend for me um, you know just controlling her seeing how she reacts to her to her surroundings as Latino he's actually it's funny he's he's not technically that sensitive um, but he can be a little bit jittery like if something happens outside or something he'll you know he'll look and so it was good to, to ride her and just um, get a feel for her. Um, as I mentioned, I was having some problems with my Pixio. So I don't know. So the second day, I finally got it to follow me. But then it wasn't following me closely. So it wasn't zooming in as much. So I still have to get my head around this stupid stuff. I'm digitally and, I guess, camera, however, photography challenged, if you, if you will. I don't know how to call it, but it's just, it's, I don't, it doesn't interest me, um, but I have to make it happen uh, anyway. And I'll be honest about the Pixio, the beacons are kind of a pain in the ass, because you have to put them in the corner, and then you have to turn them on, so you have to put, you know, the one furthest, like, that diagonal on the, on the corner over there, um, you have to put beacon number one, and beacon number two always has to be left to the camera, and then beacon number three there, and then you have to turn them on in the right order. So you're walking around, and then, you know, you don't want to turn them on and then go saddle up your horse. You have to turn them on, and then, um, or you have to saddle up your horse. Then you have to go and turn them on, so you have to walk through. And this is a 20 by, by 60 um, meter uh, riding arena, so it's like, you know, your proper Grand Prix size. Um, so it's a bloody long walk to walk back and forth, and you have to go over the diagonal. But anyway, um... But she was great. Um, she was super sensitive. So when I um, did my lateral movements and everything, she was really reactive to that. I didn't wear spurs. I normally have to wear spurs with Latino because I just don't. He's more of a man's horse. You know, he just requires a little bit more strength in your legs. And I'm not used to that because I ride a horse like this mare at home. As he sold us like super sensitive, right? So I don't really, uh, I'm not really used to that. So it was nice that she was um, so responsive to my leg. Um, the only thing I didn't get yet, I didn't get her mosquito swinging. So that's something that, that comes from a, um, a cadence in, in their walk. Here she's kind of lagging with that hind leg. You need to, when you do the pirouette um, around the hindquarters, you want them to really keep stepping with their hind leg. Here I'm making my circle a little bit too big. Um, could have been smaller. Um, when you do the, the pirouette around the forehand. Um, the camera almost loses me here. I, I didn't take the pictures or the footage of when I'm in the corner because it almost lost me. Um, you're doing a half of 180 pirouette uh, and then back on the straight line. I think I do a paso costado here where I Oh, no, backwards. She was really nice backwards as well. But backwards, apparently, she has the tendency to, to go in protest. So what they want to see, you know, when you're doing the competitions, any competition, um, backwards actually counts double or three times, I believe. And the reason why is because backwards really shows um, the submission. And, you know, some people nowadays, everything's all fluffy and, you know, bunny hugging and everything. Um, but backwards is, oh, there's the, the costado, the straight across. Uh, backwards is super important um, because it shows the submission of the horse. So last comp competition I went to, Manolete. I don't know if you, know, if you guys are following my Facebook, you would have seen that. Um, Manolete had some problems with his back. He had a perfect test. Yeah, see, I'm having a little bit of conversation there with her. I, couldn't, I didn't quite get her totally going straight and parallel across. Um, but it's all about reacting and feeling. See there, yeah, her shoulders were going first and I wanted her to go straight, more parallel across and her hindquarters kind of lagging down. 
But anyway, so the backwards um, is super important. So uh, he, he did a perfect test, but his backwards wasn't good. And he did it several times, and he kept on getting at the last moment this protest. Um, and, that, and I talked about it with Antonio. I showed him, and he said that's really basically a flaw um, in the training. Um, so something at some point you know, went wrong that they, uh, that they did see her do those little steps that she did. And it's like, it's like you know, I have electric spurs on or something. When you, when you see it, it doesn't look so bad, but when you're riding it, it feels more extreme. Um, but anyway, so the submission is super important. And why is the submission important? Well, you know, if you, if you think back what this derives from, the riding, the Domo Aikid, it's for riding with the cattle in the, in the campo, in the field, in the countryside. And, and because they're aggressive, it's absolutely, um, you know, uh, essential that the horses are obedient and the horses are uh, submissive even, because a fraction of a second of a doubt of, you know, of non-obedience can mean um, potentially death for, for everybody. So it's really important that, um, that the horses react um, very well to the cues. So that's something that's, that's, Ah, oh, media about uh, my favorite. Uh, that's something that's that's uh, scored very high, um, very important. She does amazing ones. Um, it was funny because I was um, I was doing them and it wasn't all going that well. Um, and when you think about it too much, then it doesn't go well because it's. People ask me, how do you do that? Well, you 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 think stop backward and then to the side, all in one motion. So it's this flowing motion, right? So later, I don't know if you saw that, I, I did a, a onboard um, view. I took my mobile phone. That one wasn't very good. I took my mobile phone, and I, I filmed it from, from you know, uh, uh, see, that wasn't great. That was, it's all my fault because she does it very well. Um, so I'm just trying. I have to feel how, how, she, how she is there. She picked up nice, but I need to give her more space. So Antonio, when he gave me the lesson, he said, more legs, you know, less range. Just give her the space to turn around. Um, and I wasn't doing that enough. But when I was doing it, filming it from on her back with my camera, that one was better. Um, it was funny because then I wasn't thinking about it because I was so busy doing the camera. So there I did like like four or five times like after each other, dun, dun, dun. And, and I didn't even think about it, and then it went natural. So that's how it goes. And look how, look how um, um, there she's a little bit crooked, but um, she's, when you see her coming from the straight, um, I don't know if you remember the videos of Latino so crooked, and she's so nice and straight, and it was so nice. Um, and also, I, I told Antonio, I feel like I really have much more control over her, so when I do something, she reacts. And that's what I had last time with Latino, my lesson went absolutely shite because I just didn't have any control I felt like I you know uh, when I tried to correct him with things he wouldn't respond and Antonio was like well then you're not doing it right which is technically the case because if he got on he would be able to do it but I just couldn't get get him to do it because I didn't have the strength um, and he just wouldn't react to my leg or my hand so um, and that's because he's not, you know, he's not totally sup with the moment. So then you need apparently more strength or, you know, or obviously um, somebody that's handier. But um, but she was so reactive. So it was so nice to ride her because I knew that whatever I did, you know, she's going to respond. So if I needed to, if she wasn't doing what I wanted, then all I had to do was, was ask her what I did want and then she would respond. So that's, um, see, that makes me feel more confident. Um, I think I'm going to do, oh, that was a terrible flying change. Um, I think I'm going to do, um, or that's why I, I told Antonio, I said, that's why, I, you know, I and for, and for now, if I had to choose, I would choose her because um, she's much more responsive um, to me, and I feel like I have more control. So if I'm riding the championships, you know, I have to know, that my horse is going to respond to what I'm saying because you don't know how they are. I mean, it's going to be, you know, during the competition and everything's new and everything's new for me. Um, and I have to be able to, you know, I have to feel confident that I'm totally in control of her four legs. Um, or, you know, whichever horse's four legs um, to be able to do what I need to do um, in case, you know, the horse reacts differently than, than it does at home. 
Um, and the fact that, you know, I feel confident helps a lot. But if I have to go and I'm not totally confident, and it's already, you know, scary as shit enough, so um, that's an important, a really important piece. But there's one more horse, actually, I have to choose from, so I haven't ridden him yet. It's a very young horse that Antonio's been preparing for, for competition, um, and then it belongs to a, a breeder, so it's really interesting for him if, uh, if his horse was in the championships. Um, and it's an Anglo-Arabian. He, he breeds mostly Anglo-Arabians. Um, he has an Arabian stallion, a thoroughbred stallion, and then he has lots of mares. And every year he brings the young horses to Antonio um, to be trained, you know, um, under saddle, um, and trained further. Um, and this is a young horse, quite a big horse, because most of his horses are a little bit small. Um, and um, I think he's, in my mind, he's somewhere in between this mare, so not quite as sensitive as this mare, and not quite as, as a man's horse as Latino is. Um, but on the other hand, he's very young, so he's not very experienced. So every, every, each one has their, their specific uh, advantages. So Latino's very experienced, he can do absolutely everything, but you know he needs to be made more supple. There's my pixie, oh, not following me, damn it. Um, he needs to be made more supple, and then there's this mare who's super sensitive, um, and she's a uh, supple, you know, she's ridden well. Antonio will also prepare her even more. Um, if, if I choose to ride her as we get closer to the Campeonato. And, oh, that back leg lagged behind uh, in, the, in the flying change there. So I have to work on those as well. Um, so, um, and all, that's my timing, most likely. Um, so those are all the things that I have to work on. Um, so that'll be exciting. So I'll be going... Um, two, three weeks ahead of time, at least two weeks, and, and hopefully three weeks uh, ahead of time to do some intensive training and decide which horse I'm actually going to ride, and then make sure, um, oop, not my fault, see, that, that was absolutely crap, don't let that happen at the championships. Um, trying to do every four steps, yeah, that was better, but still crap. Um, but yeah, so there's lots to do. And when I go next time, I also have to choose an outfit because I have an outfit that I always use for demonstrations in Holland, but it's actually too big. Um, so I need to get another one, a proper one, because you can't rock up in a, you know, not an absolutely amazing outfit. And and then I'm, I have to think about which colors because I don't know if I should choose. Um, I think blue would look very nice on Latino, but if I wrote this mirror, I think probably the black would look nicer. Um, so definitely some work to be done on the flying changes there for, on my part, um, because she can do them. That, that was better though, that was more straight. I think I'm going to do a pirouette, uh, no. I thought at one point I did a, a, a canter pirouette, I'm just doing crap with flying changes. <laughs> I have to do them every, uh, two steps, so one, two, change, one, two. Um, at the championships, and then some riders do them every every step um, as well, just to show off. I think basically, um, but in turn, um, it's mandatory to do every two. Um, that's what's required. But um, so really exciting stuff coming up. Um, if you if you're a subscriber and you don't know me, please find me. Look, that she thought I was doing wanted to do a canter pirouette. Um, please find me on uh, on Facebook under Centauro or my name Mika Helkema. Um, and you'll find me there as well, um, and, and, you know, befriend me, uh, and then you can follow my day-to-day -day journey, um, because I don't post everything as a video on, uh, on YouTube. So, um, and if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe in any case, um, and make sure you also follow me, uh, on Facebook. I have uh, my Centauro page and my personal page. I also have a website as well, Centauro Domo Aquera. If, you, if you've never um, found that yet as well, with some information about myself, who I am, where I come from, and about Doma La Quiera, of course. Um, so really exciting stuff coming up, and I hope you enjoy the journey um, together with me um, as, I, as I go to Spain and do this thing that, that was absolutely my dream. Uh, so hope to see you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.